Alright, this is John Colo with GrowingYourDreams.com to do another exciting episode for you. I'm here at the Soil Life Summit 2024 in Pahrump, Nevada, at Green Life Production uh, Produce. And you guys can see all the amazing tomatoes and basil and uh, like onion greens and chives planted in this greenhouse. We're filming late at night actually. And uh, who I'm going to introduce you guys to is Jeremy from Build the Soil. I followed Build the Soil for so many years now. You want to check out their YouTube channel. Of course, Jeremy also provides some of the most highest quality, especially rare input, soil inputs you guys can add to your organic garden. He just got out of his literally too long keynote spe speech here, which I got to hear some of. And we're going to tap into some of his knowledge so that you guys can learn the truth about organic inputs and things that you may be buying at a local nursery and literally putting into your garden. So uh, I have a few questions for Jeremy since I've never had him on the show before. Uh, first question is, Jeremy, why did you start Build the Soil? Good question. So I was looking for some of these same organic inputs. I wanted to try with the world record pumpkin growers, the tomato growers. I wanted to try to make my own soil and I was reading about them online and it became very hard to source these ingredients. I learned a lot about the industry that I was unhappy with, and I thought, if I feel this way, other enthusiasts have to feel this way, and if they find out, they want to know that they might use my business to source some of these ingredients. And right place, right time, maybe got a little lucky, but it was right, and business started to go up, and so I worked really hard to continue the dream, and that's where we're at right now. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he, he finds like really cool things that like normal companies would discontinue because maybe it's not profitable to them, but he'll still sell it because he knows they are valuable inputs and that people out there will appreciate it. He got lots of love in the uh, keynote address afterwards, you know, because he's like, people are so happy that he's there providing not only the ingredients, but also knowledge and forms of different soil recipes. He connects with some of the top growers <laughs> in the country to you know, share their knowledge and make it accessible to you. So you want to talk about that part of your business and how important that is to you, Jeremy? Sure. So when we started connecting with customers, we found that when someone comes to the organic side, they have a lot of similar beliefs about what they're doing. They want to provide a better future. They want to build healthy soil. And most importantly, many of us come to find that the GMOs, the pesticides, the herbicides, and the old way of farming is not only hurting our soil, but it's hurting our children it's hurting our relatives. These chemicals are in our blood and we're learning more about the probiotics and the biome and how we're murdering it. And so when we learn about this, we think, let's try organic gardening. And if you just go to the nursery store, what I want to encourage you to do is to flip over the organic fertilizer and read the ingredients like you're at the grocery store. And it's going to take a little bit of learning, so do some reading, but I'll give you some thoughts. There's only about four crops that we live off of right now. So the big ones, the big two, soy and corn, the whole grocery store, when you start to learn about food, is all soy and corn. The cattle's fed it, so the milk is it, the grain is it. Like all the products are made of mixtures of these products and they're coated in pesticides and chemicals. Here's what they don't tell you. When they chop that stuff up, it's now approved for organic use. You can have the worst tainted cotton. Cotton, they douse. They spray the Roundup on it just to harvest it like the wheat. And now, once it's chopped up, it's because we're not eating it. It's not food. This is fertilizer. It's now deemed approved for organic use. And you don't know, but you're dumping the pesticides right back in your garden on accident. Now, thankfully, organics can handle a lot of that. The biology is amazing, but we don't want to willingly do this. So look for cotton, look for soy, look for corn, look for bone meal, blood meal. A lot of these are slaughterhouse waste, and you'll think, bone meal that's organic it says organic well it's from the slaughterhouses that are not feeding organic that are not treating the soil right and it's the big huge slaughterhouses there is no organic bone meal in the United States that I'm aware of um, poultry manure most miracle Grow organic or these big brands that are advertising organic they don't care they make every product that's not organic the only reason they made organic is they thought they could take your money so on the back you flip it and it says poultry litter Oh, guess what? That's not organic. It's approved for organic use. It is from the GMO pesticide fed, worst atrocious treatment of these chickens. I love chickens. If you've had chickens, they're incredible animals and they just trick us. And so we could talk for hours, but I just want to leave you with the fact that approved for organic use does not mean organic origin because it's not food. And at Build-A-Soil, we only source from organic origin 
or we highly test to understand wild harvested, where is this coming from? That allows us to operate holistically. Instead of looking for symptoms in the garden, we go back to the root and we're able to have really good success doing so. Wow, so just like when you guys go to the supermarket, hopefully you're turning the backs and reading the ingredients and hopefully you're gonna avoid things that say, you know, things with corn, soy, some of the same things you said, we don't wanna eat either because they're highly sprayed, whether it's, you know, corn syrup in your soda, which they extract out from the corn and then guess what, all that corn byproduct they gotta get rid of, then it goes into the organics, right? And then it ends yep. up in soil products, which it's all sprayed. So, I mean, whether you're eating it or whether you're putting in a garden that you will end up eating, <laughs> Don't buy the BS, all right? I agree. And soda's not real food. Don't drink the soda anyways. Drink water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make fresh, drink your fresh green juice that you made at home. Yes, <laughs> yeah. living green juice. Living green juice. If you were to, don't, like, don't look on the microscope at your juice, because it'll scare you. But if you do, it's alive. You're consuming living cells. That is vital. That's different than something at the grocery store that you might buy. I encourage you to listen to what he's saying. That's been pasteurized, of course. Yes, yeah. of course. Or even HPP or, yeah. They, anyways, you want to minimally process your food and hopefully you're making things from scratch at home, right? And actually talking about making things from scratch. That's why build the soil is so cool because you can source the ingredients that he's already tested that are actually organic approved or he's finally tested them to the T and got all the test data to make sure they're not and don't have any heavy metals and all this kind of stuff, right? And then take those ingredients and then make your own soil blends. Of course, you could buy his soil blends. So Jeremy, you want to discuss, you know, about all the different ingredients that you could make to bake a, not, sure. not, not a cake, but bake the best quality home soil mix that he'll also share with you guys, soil, you know, recipes to make. Yes, I'd love to. So if you go to buildasoil.com, we have a lot of free education. You can go to the educational area. You can just Google build a soil, building soil. We have a few recipes, but what most of them have in common is that we're making something that's not soil. In our backyard, we have lots of minerals, it's hard soil. We are not all privileged with getting great farmland. We may have what used to be a parking lot as our soil. So a lot of building soil from scratch into a potting soil recipe is about making a raised bed, making a container full of something that today, when you make it, or in a week from now, can be highly productive versus having to improve the backyard soil that may take time. We teach both and we encourage both. But mixing potting, potting soil from scratch, we leverage peat moss, pumice instead of perlite. Perlite are the little white pebbles you see in the potting soil at the store. That's obsidian that's mined and expanded through lots of energy. And they only do it because it's lightweight for freight and for shipping. We use a mineral that comes from a volcano. Where are healthy farms? Near volcanoes. Hawaii, Oregon, the whole west coast. So that mineralization is important. You can follow basic recipes to mix these together to make a texture that your plants like. And when you learn a little more from us, you can add some organic amendments that will balance feed your plants without having to have like a degree in chemistry. You don't have to have all the bottled nutrients and pH. You just put it in there and all of the biology in the soil and the teaming up of that with your plant creates luxury health, really good nutrient dense food. And what's neat is on a commercial farm, maybe you have to get the soil test and figure out how to increase production. But on your farm, you'll have more than you know what to do with, and you'll be giving the food to your neighbors because this stuff just works when you trust nature. Cool, so uh, going deeper into some of the ingredients, what are the top five ingredients you sell at Build the Soil? Okay, perfect. So top five ingredients when it comes to mixing potting soil. Compost and worm castings are two of our most popular because the local compost guy may not be making very good compost and people have realized that compost is not just compost. You have to look for good stuff. We both look at it from a biological perspective as far as making sure that it's healthy and alive, but more importantly to me, that it's not filled with bad chemical profile. Biology can always return, but if it's salty, it's gonna hurt your garden. So those are two of our most popular. The next most popular, a product called Craft Blend. The reason why it's called Craft Blend, my buddy's last name is Craft. He said, look it, you have a lot of cool ingredients. I like them all. I don't want to buy 15 50 pound bags to take back to my garage. Can you just mix. mix them together uh, for me? Cool. So I took 15 rare, hard to find ingredients with rock dust for micronutrients, seed meals that we use for overall nutrition, and rare ingredients too that provide beneficials to the soil besides the nutrients. We mix all 15 ingredients together and it's become our number one bestseller and I know why. You have to buy truckloads of stuff and find a way to mix it. They don't make equipment for all of it. So wow! So you could just buy that, that and then mix it into your, you yes. know, your 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 beds or into pots or whatever. So yep. now you just basically supercharge your Super plants. Charged. 
And so from there, the next thing that people learn about is the biology. And you're like, well, do I have good biology? Do I not? And in a fresh potting soil with some amendments, maybe grow a little cover crop or grow your veggies in there, it will come to life. It just will. But in the pursuit of getting the best results, we have a microbial product called RootWise, and it has the mycorrhizae that people learn that connects with the plants and helps make them healthier. And I've heard you talk about this, but these endophytes, these bacteria, in the absence of them, the plants get sick, they get cold, they get warm, they, they, they just are kind of weak. And so as plants, they've teamed up with nature in this biology to be resilient and healthy and not succumb to disease. And so just like you might take some health tonics for yourself, the RootWise is the biology that's found on very healthy farms. It's made in the United States, and the reason that's important to me is these are DNA sequenced and proven to be what they are. Most biology products are imported by a salesperson from a manufacturer overseas to create a business model. Very difficult to create a lab. The lab that we use is in the United States, and while you don't need biology, we've noticed when people use it, especially when they're newer, they get a much broader margin for success because if you don't get the watering just right, it can kind of interrupt the biology. Maybe you leave for the weekend, your garden gets baked or whatever. Introduction of biology can help those nutrients go without having to buy water-soluble chemicals. So those are probably the most popular products we carry. Wow, cool. Yeah, so like the root-wise is, is super important to me in the biology. So you want to discuss that a little bit more, like why it's such to use a root-wise instead of like a good compost tea, for example. Oh, this is a good idea. So. If you have compost and you're sure that is of good quality, it's going to have a lot of life. One of the challenges that we have is that in a compost tea, you're bubbling in water, which is not the same environment that's gonna live in the soil. And so if you don't have the temperature just right, you haven't taken the course, you don't do the dissolved oxygen perfect, you don't have a microscope, which by the way, I don't think you need any of that, you may not be brewing something that's what you think it is. It may be taken over by one species versus the other. So the RootWise is biologically balanced how the quorums normally do on a healthy farm. We see these ratios. So don't go buy five or six biology products. You're just spending extra money. It's like buying five or six gut pills when sometimes yogurt would just do. So the RootWise is already balanced and it has stuff that's harder to get on a brand new farm. So the mycorrhizae, other people will buy. Azos is a product that does nitrogen fixing. That's already in there. The phosphorus mobilizers, that's already in there. So at least you know, okay, all the good stuff's there. And what I've learned from permaculture is that nature doesn't like void. It fills whatever space there is. So when you're making a brand new soil and it's kind of not ramped up to life yet, buying a product that's fully balanced means you're filling all of that with stuff that you know is going to be good. So that's how many different kinds of microbes are in your RootWise product? Uh, so RootWise is manufactured by a good friend of mine. It's another product. And so there are hundreds, if not thousands in there. Really? Labeling laws make it very challenging to disclose every single piece of microbe that's in there, let alone just our lack of understanding of them. But if you look on the package, there's about 20 of them that are very, very important, that are highly discussed. They're on the back of the package. We have some other cool stuff. Like I've got a buddy that he goes and gets raw milk from a farm. Raw milk is very hard to get. And he has a share in it. And he actually ferments it. Um, by using kefir grains. Oh, cool. And kefir is really good for you. We're talking about gut biology. A lot of people hear their gut with kefir. Well, what he does is he over ferments it until the kefir separates into solids with whey or the liquid underneath. And he's been able to stabilize that whey and you can give it to your garden and the plants instantly perk up. It's like when you measure at the lab, there's no nutrition in it. Like very little MPK. But somehow the plants go crazy. And so we're not inventing anything. He's just stabilizing kefir. Kefir's been used for gut all the time, but in the soil, it performs similar functions. So even though RootWise is my favorite, if you live in another country, you don't have access to RootWise. The key goal is to just love on the microbes, make sure that we have some food for them, organic amendments, make sure the moisture stays good, and we protect the surface of the soil with some sort of mulch. Any mulch is okay when it's on the surface. Some people will scare you over certain things. That is a really good start about um, for building a biological based system. And t talking about biological based systems in your talk, and, and I was really impressed that you actually talked about this was comparing the soil microbiome or rhizosphere to like our human microbiome. So like I've been doing human on myself microbiome testing and I've gotten my diversity up from 750 up to 950. So you want to talk about how important, uh, you know, uh, in the, the relationship that you see between soil and gut microbiome. Yes, I love talking about this. So you've been doing measuring on your gut microbiome. Right. And what's fascinating is I've been doing more research about this and I like to try things personally. So I've gone completely vegan, plant-based and eaten that way. I've eaten everything in the middle and I've also gone completely carnivore and I've seen how my body feels in all ranges. 
I've seen carnivore guys test their microbiome and increase their diversity with less diversity in their food. So to me, that means that it's not just diversity, it's just that making sure we're getting healthy, organic stuff and the microbes go crazy for it and then we're not ruining it with chemicals. So when your gut is healthy, I'd imagine the way you did it is by using whole foods that you can read, that are nutritious, that are natural. We're not putting chemical balancers and stabilizers and food colorings and dyes and bullshit because we know that we never had that thousands of years ago. How could that be good for our gut microbiome? It doesn't take a scientist to determine that. Maybe you could argue it doesn't quite hurt it much, but it's not needed. That is the beginning of fixing your gut. When it comes to the soil, same thing. The other day, we found from a hash producer who's using a drinking safe gardening hose to make the material, they found that inside the hose was 23,000 parts per million of an, a fungicide used in agriculture. What? Now, we don't know if they put that in there to make the hose antifungal and just weren't telling us or whether it was an accident, but we wouldn't have known that without testing because of all the stuff that we're doing. Wow. So like, it's amazing how much this can come kind of full circle by sharing information together. So um, it's important what you put in the soil and when you interrupt the gut of the, of the plants, which is the soil, you interrupt their nutrient uptake. That leads to disease and that leads to weak plants. And then how are we supposed to fix our gut with weak plants, yeah. right? This is so interconnected. Nature doesn't have a black and white, like the soil food web, our gut, all of it. We're walking biology. Just because we have a mouth and it's closed, <laughs> at the, like just because we can walk around and plants can't, doesn't mean there's not similar processes at play. And it really is fascinating. Wow, and what I'd say is this, like, and build a soil supplies everything you need to make your plants roots happy and improve the plant microbiome all in like a one-stop shop, literally. So, um, you know, if you guys want to learn about Build the Soil more, you could check out their YouTube channel, which is a link down below, or of course their website and all the education they provide online. So Jeremy, do you want to share any last uh, words of wisdom to my viewers before we sign off today? Um, no, I would just say that keep on the pursuit. If you're watching a channel like this, then you're doing something right. Uh, he says that he's followed me for a while. It's the other way around. He's been around before Build a Soil. I was geeking out when I saw him today. My face lit up. I was like, it's going your greens. Like I know what's happening here. And so one thing that I will relate that I notice within him that I think my customers notice within me, whatever he's doing is working because his vitality, his energy, it's like you, you know the vibe, like you feel it. And that's probably why you might pick up on some of this. That's connected to the soil too. I appreciate you guys for watching and just trust your gut. Don't eat bullshit. Don't feed your soil stuff that you know you shouldn't. And really, this stuff is a lot simpler than these fertilizer sales people want to make it out to. Cool. All right, Jeremy. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode so much. And if you didn't want more episodes with Jeremy in the future, hey, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. More importantly, share this with you with other people so that they can learn the truth about organic amendments and really feeding your soil right and taking your garden to the next level. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss my new and upcoming episodes. I'll be coming out of every five to seven days. You know, no wash show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the little bell so you're notified as many videos come out. And finally, be sure to check past episodes. My past episodes are wealth of knowledge. Over 1,700 episodes at this time on this channel dedicated to teach you guys all about how to grow the highest quality food at home so you can be healthier. So with that, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing.